For today's catch and cook, we're going to be based around our Hail Mary cereal mackerel. I went ahead and filleted that out and skinned it and boned it, so we have some nice clean fillets there. And then I also kept one of the yellowtail snappers, which I left the skin and scales on, so we're going to do some yellowtail snapper on the half shell. And then we've got the rest of our ingredients here, including a nice ribeye. So we're going to be doing another type of... Uh, Surf and turf with a few other variables thrown in here. But anyways, we got all of our ingredients all ready to go, so let's put this all together. The first thing that we're going to be working on is the ribeye, because we are of course going to be doing it sous vide style, which if you watch my last surf and turf video, I kind of went over how to do that. So it's a nice way to do a steak perfectly. And for that, we are just going to Dab a little bit of olive oil. On both sides, get some nice oil on there. Salt and pepper is pretty much all you gotta do. I'm gonna hit both sides. And then I'm going to put on a few sprigs of thyme. And this is all just going to go in the bag. So we've got our food saver bag here. So we're going to throw our steak in that. More sprigs on this side. Okay, ready to vacuum seal. All right, let's get this guy vacuum sealed. Okay. And we are all sealed and ready to go. And ready to go in our bath. Okay, we just did our temperature check. So we're right at 131 degrees. We're gonna do medium rare, so we're gonna hit 130. It's gonna drop a little bit when I drop the cooler temperature steak in there. So I'm just gonna drop that in there. Close the lid. And we're done. Uh, what I find that is uh, we're just going to go an hour at uh, 130 degrees and just try to keep it about there. And it's been averaging that I have to uh, drop some boiling water in there uh, generally twice. So once at a half an hour mark and then maybe 10 minutes before the hour is up or right at the hour and just let it sit for another 5-10 minutes after that. But it's just basically, um, because this insulated cooler works so effectively, it doesn't drop very much. You can check every 10 minutes until you get used to whatever setup you're using, but otherwise we're good to go. The steak is done. Well, until I sear it, but otherwise this part of it's done. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and get ready for the sauce that I want to put on top of the uh, yellowtail snapper on the half shell. I'm going to go with kind of like a classic um, dill and cucumber sauce. Um, pretty easy, pretty quick. So all we're going to do, take some sour cream. It's all just mix and match, so like I don't really ever do too much in measurements. I'm just going to do a dab of spicy brown mustard. We got the some of our good juicy lemons. Or key limes, actually. Not too much there. Not a lot. A little bit of mayonnaise, just to give it a little bit. I like that little bit of consistency. Thicken it up a bit. There goes our dill. 
and then our little dice cucumbers. There, and just mix it up. Since it's uh, almost 4th of July, we're out in the middle of summertime, 80 to 90 degree heat, you have to have some cool toppings, so that's where this comes into play. And that's it, pretty quick and easy, and that's gonna go really well on top of those uh, fillets on the half shell. Now we're gonna throw that in the freezer and chill it a bit. Prepare another one of our quickie side dishes here. I'm gonna do kind of a stuffed tomato. Usually I do the uh, green bell peppers on the barbecue, then I throw like um, potato salad in there, but because it's summer, it's hot, I'm gonna try to keep away from like the, the hot foods. So I'm gonna use a tomato instead. Just cut the bottom and make it flat. And we're just gonna scoop out the innards as best we can. Wow, these are juicy. Super juicy. Okay, so we have it cored out. Take some of our potato salad. And bam, there you go. <laughs> okay, once we've got both uh, tomatoes packed full of uh, potato salad, then just gonna sprinkle a little bit of paprika on it, a little flavoring and then a uh, a little bit of color doesn't hurt. And that part is done. Into the freezer it goes. With the uh, cereal mackerel, I wanted to make something a little different, so we're gonna go with a uh, Hawaiian poke style, just uh, using the cereal mackerel instead of uh, ahi or tuna. Uh, the ingredients that we're gonna go with is I just cubed up the cereal mackerel fillets. Uh, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a sweet and sour, so I'm gonna add in some uh, pineapple, uh, we've got some macadamia nuts finely chopped. Uh, I've got red onions, some uh, green onions chopped up, fresh ginger, and then a jalapeno. I'll throw a squeeze of lemon, not too much, just for a little bit of flavoring there. Throw some sesame seeds, a little bit of sesame oil, and some soy sauce. And then I'll put a little dab of sugar just to sweeten things up a little bit, but that's primarily what the pineapple is for. But anyways, that is our poke, so let me throw it all together. No fuss, no muss, so we're just gonna throw the fish pieces in first. Then after that, it doesn't really matter. Kinda mix everything up while we're putting it in there. Okay, there we go. Just give that a little stir up. Ooh, already smells so good. Just almost like a variant of the ceviche, but uh, we're not gonna be using the acidic part uh, to cook it. We're just gonna go not more than just like a uh, marinated sashimi and we're gonna go some soy sauce sesame oil and then some finally some toasted sesame seeds yeah, you could put those on as a garnish, but I'll just get some in there for making it all together. 
mix it up really well so everything gets coated. I'm going to throw a little bit of sugar in there. And I might throw, well, we'll see how it goes. I might throw some red pepper flakes in there for a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice to it, but for now, we'll just go like this. Everything's nice and well coated. You don't want to mush it up, so as soon as it's cut up, that's all good. You just want it all coated with the, uh, the oils. And that's basically it. We're good to go. The steak's been... Uh, Marinating for an hour in our 130 degree temperature water. So we can open up our food saver bag, take out our steak. And there we go, it's done. Doesn't look all that uh, done, but right now what it is, it's at 130 degree temperature from top to bottom. Not, not one section is more than 130 degrees. It's all basically top to bottom. So all we got to do now is basically sear the top, sear the bottom, and do it as fast as we can so that the insides don't cook anymore. And that'll allow us to have a perfect steak with the medium rare being from the all the way at the top and all the way at the bottom rather than if you grilled it baked it wherever it'll be more done and then decreasing less doneness as you get towards the center so it'll be all different uh, stages where this one is just completely one so let's throw it on some heat we've got pretty much everything ready for the grill i'm going to just do some butter on top of the fish That'll be good enough to keep them nice and juicy. And then I'm gonna do basically just some pepper and then some Everglaze and replacement in case instead of the uh, salt. Now we're ready for the grill. All right, we can get this fish on here. Okay, pan's nice and hot, so let's throw this steak on there. And we're just going to let it go for 30 seconds to a minute, just so we just want to get it uh, charred up a little bit. Alright, let's go and flip this. Let's take this off. And we're going to let that rest for 5-10 minutes. Don't really need to, but just in case. And these guys are coming along fine. We'll just give them a few more minutes. Maybe not even that. I'll put this away and I'll come back and get those. Let's take a look and see how the steak came out. I dobbed some uh, butter on the end there just to add a little saltiness to it. And there we go. Perfectly medium rare. And then as you can see, it is uh, medium rare from right up to the top to all the way to the bottom except for just where we seared it and that's like i said that's the reason why this is such an excellent technique is if you ask for a medium rare steak you get the whole steak in medium rare not just the, the quarter of the center of it and then the rest gets more done as you go up if you try to do it on the grill or bake it or fry it whatnot 
doing this sous vide mess that allows you to get the entire thing just that one same temperature grade. And in this case, this is 130 degrees. So based on that, if you want it a little bit more rare, you can go to 128, 127. Uh, if you wanted to uh, go more of the uh, well to well done, you can probably go to a 135 to 140. Again, all in about that hour range. And then of course the sear comes into play. Then of course we've got our fish fillets. And what happens is the, uh, the scales and the skin protect it from getting burnt on the grill, but yet it stays nice and moist and flaky and cooks perfectly like there. And that's with all the butter, so it's a little bit more <laughs> oily than uh, what it looks. But anyways, that is the basics, so we're, let's go ahead and plate this up. We are all done with our, I guess we'll call it a 4th of July sampler plate, uh, since we're right in the middle of summertime here. Uh, going around, what we've got is some Hawaiian-style poke with a little bit of a twist. Uh, we're using Cyril mackerel instead of the ahi or tuna. And I went with a little bit of a sweet and sour flavor by adding um, pineapple. Then what we've got here is some yellowtail snapper fillets on the half shell. Um, basically, that means flaying them, leaving the scales and skin on, and then barbecuing them with the skin scale down. Maybe just throw some butter and spices on top and just bake them like that. You never flip them. And that's one of the foolproof ways of not overcooking your fish because that scales and uh, skin will protect it. And also that layer of flat fat between the, the meat and the skin, it adds a lot of flavor. Uh, I topped that with a, a nice dill cucumber uh, sauce. And like I said, for summertime, 4th of July, get a little bit of a cool flavoring to it. Then we've got our sous vide styled uh, ribeye bone in and uh, right perfectly cooked there. And uh, I've already eaten half of it <laughs> making this video because I can't stop picking at it. Then uh, we went ahead and stuffed some uh, basic red tomatoes with uh, potato salad. So anyways, that's what we've got for our summertime fish sampler. Well, let's try a little bit before we get going here. But I've been chomping down on as I've been making this video. I already ate half the steak. That was a poke. Yeah, see, that's right on. I knew that cereal mackerel would be an excellent substitute for the tuna. It's a lighter flavor than the tuna, but it still has a little bit of the... Um, raw oily taste to it. Uh, definitely not the fishy oily, but yeah, that's a perfect, perfect uh, match for uh, doing that poke. And I also know, cause I've been chopping on the uh, yellowtail snapper. I had to cover the middle of it with the sauce to make it look like I hadn't eaten it. The snapper is a, it's an excellent way of doing it. Like I said, it's kind of a foolproof way, so you can't really overcook it, or very hard to overcook it. Keeps it nice and moist. The dill sauce is definitely not required, but like I said, for a little bit of summertime, it's nice to have like a nice, cool, creamy sauce, and that dill cucumber really fits the mold there. Now I already knew the steak. The steak is awesome. I mean, it is just so tender and juicy. I mean... Salt and pepper, and butter, that's it. Mm. Just oh so good. And then another one of the summer options. Like I said, I usually do the uh, grilled bell pepper and stuff it with some sort of potato salad, macaroni salad, but summertime, 80, 90 degrees out. Got to try to do a few cool things, so. Perfect summer meal. Maybe a suggestion for 4th of July. But anyways, 
Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye. Mm-mm-mm.